the floor here is perfectly aligned, the chair is per perfectly aligned as we can see if we just zoom in here. Hey guys and welcome to a new video on this point cloud tutorial. In this video here we're going to talk about post estimation in OM4D. So specifically in this video here we're going to talk about like how we can do local alignment or like local registration. And then another video we're going to talk about how we can actually like do uh, global uh, registration. But we're going to go into details what these things mean and how we can actually like do post estimation um, on point clouds on two point clouds. So let's say we have a, like a local or like an object of a point cloud or like we have a point cloud or an object and then we have a scene point cloud. How can we actually like match that object to our scene and how can we do a post estimation of that object in our scene? But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, share us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. And also, if you have some problems in your own projects, uh, I can help you out with that as well if you're a member of the channel. So, thank you guys. So, let's just jump straight into the code here where we open up this example from Home 3D where, where we're both going to use uh, the tutorial. Uh, that they're providing and also the data for the different kind of point clouds so as we've been using throughout this tutorial here but first of all we should talk about like what is actually like um icp which is iterative closed point so we iteratively try to find the closed point and from our object in the object scene and then we try to do an actual like pose estimation of that so we can then align our object in our scene or just like find the pose um, of our object so the idea behind the iterative closed point algorithm is that for each object point we have, so we have an object point cloud and then we have a point cloud of our scene. So we're going to have, for each object point we have, we find the nearest point in the scene and then we try to match those points. So we do that for all the points in our actual like object point cloud. Then we have these pairs for our both our uh, object points and also our scene points. So we have our, our uh, pairs. And then we try to estimate our transformation or like the, 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 the transformation between those points that we have actually like uh, paired up. So this is actually like the idea behind doing this uh, transformation estimation or like this post estimation um, of our object in our scene. We're going to do that with the iterative close point and what that means is that we're just going to like iterate over the process over and over again until we actually like get to the, to the actual uh, post of our object. So we actually have a requirement for this, um, for this algorithm here and that is that that the pose is almost or like close to be the actual like pose or like the pose that we want to estimate. So we can't really like have, if we have like an object that is orientated like this, we can't really have an, like an object uh, orientated like in, in a whole nother way and just like translated far away from the actual object um, in the scene. We're going to talk about global registration in another video where we can actually like, it doesn't matter about the, the pose or like the orientation of our object uh, to start off with or like a translation or like where it is in the scene, we can use global registration to actually like find that object and then do post estimation on that object. Um, and it doesn't depend on like an initial guess or like initial uh, post of our object where here with ICP, we need our object to be like close to the actual post that we want to find um, in our object scene or like in our scene uh, of our point cloud. So when we actually have this um, est estimation here of our transformation, then we can just apply our transformation to our object points, and then we can actually like align our object points uh, with our scene points, and then we can do this pose estimation, or we can find the actual pose, and then we can compare points in the two point clouds from our object point cloud and our scene point cloud. But first of all here, we're just going to import the modules here again. We're going to go through the example. In this video here, we're going to go through the, um, the iterative, uh, the clear, uh, like the iterative closest point algorithm. We have two different kind of very, uh, like two different kind of variations of this um, ICP algorithms, where first of all, we're going to do point to point ICP, and then we're going to do point to plane ICP, and then we're going to see um, the actual differences. It might be better to use a point to plane ICP as we're going to see throughout this video here. But again, we're just going to see the results and then you can try it out in your own projects. So here again, we just have like short description of like what is uh, ICP registration. I just went over it, it here, so we won't go into details about that. But here we can just see that the output is a refined transformation that tightly aligns the two point cloud. So it is trying to align the object point cloud and actually like scene point cloud by doing this post estimation uh, or like estimating, estimating this transformation. We, first of all, we're going to set up this helper visualization function so we can then visualize both our optic point cloud and also our scene point cloud. So in this example here, we're just going to have like two, uh, two point clouds of the same scene. And then we're just trying to use 
ICP to actually like align those point clouds. So we just kind of combine the two point clouds, but we could also use it for post estimation as we're going to see in, in upcoming videos where we're going to actually like have our own point clouds, create our own point clouds, have our own objects that we want to try to find in a scene that we've reconstructed uh, from stereo images or like from depth images. And then we can do a whole lot of things with both ICP and also global registration as we're going to cover in another video. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and also to hit the bell notification so you'll get a notification when I upload new videos and this tutorial here about point clouds or computer vision, AI and, and so on. So here we're just going to have this draw registration results. We're just going to pass in a source and target and then the transformation between our source and target. And then it, it will actually like just draw these two point clouds uh, together like in the same point cloud. So we're going to hit shift enter to just run this block of code. And we have also import our modules. Then we can go down here and actually like specify the input. So we both need like a source point cloud and a target point cloud. It could be our object point cloud and our, uh, our point cloud of our environment or like our scene. And then we try to match those or align that um, object in our scene as well. So here we can just see some notes about these functions. So we have these functions transform, paint uniform color, change the point cloud we can also like if you just want to make copies and we don't want to like um, modify the original point cloud we can make a copy of it first of all but then we need to do this copy dot deep copy so down here for the input we know that we need to read in a sort point cloud and a target target point cloud from two files and then a rough a transformation here is given because we know that we need to give this initial transformation when we're actually like using ICP as I talked about in the start of this video, where when we're going to do global uh, registration, this doesn't matter at all. We don't really need uh, like an initial guess or like initial pose. We can just do um, everything here. So first of all, we have our trans init here. We just pass in the source, the target, and the trans init here, like transformation, uh, our initial transformation. If we run this block of code, it will actually like draw our two point class that we load in. So we'll just have two point clouds here that we load in the source and the target. And now we're actually like running our program here. So now I'll just open it up here. So this is the actual like point clouds. We can see that the differences here is not really that great uh, when we're comparing these two point clouds. Um, again, we need this, like this is a requirement for using ICP, but we can see the blue point cloud here. So the blue point cloud is one of the point clouds and the yellow point cloud is the other. So we both have the target and the source uh, torn or like displayed here in the same point cloud. So we can see the chair here is actually like, like kind of like rotated and maybe translated a bit here compared to like when we compare two point clouds, we can also see the floor here is not aligned. Uh, it is actually like translated a bit, a bit, a, a bit down the blue point cloud here. We can also see some of the other different kind of details uh, here, for example, the vase on the table, uh, the background and so on. So we have some different kind of rotations and translations in our image here that we want to correct for and do alignment with ICP. So down here, now we've actually just displayed our point clouds. Then we can go down here and actually like have our initial alignment. So first of all, we can just set up some evaluation where we're just going to O3D pipelines registration dot evaluate registration. Up here, we can see that this calculates two main matri uh, metrics uh, that we can look at and actually like see how good does our our ICP uh, algorithm actually like work and how good results and accuracy do we get when we're aligning our point clouds. So we get a fitness score here, which just measures the overlapping uh, area. So it's the number of inline correspondence, number of points in the target. So how many points are actually like uh, from this from the source, like inside of the target. So the higher, the better here, because if we have the same number of inliers, like, uh, like we have like the total number of points that we actually have in our point clouds, if that is equal to the number of inlier correspondences, then we can just say that we have perfectly aligned our point cloud. Uh, that won't be the, that act like won't be the, the case most of the times because we just have these noisy uh, point clouds. We can't do like an exact alignment, but we'll get really good results with really good accuracy. But again, the higher the score is, the better. We also have some in layer root mean square error here that is calculated, which just measures this root mean square error of all the in layer correspondence. So all the corresponding points that is in layers in this point cloud or like in our target point clouds. We're just going to measure this um, RMS uh, E value here. And in this case, the lower, the better. So the lower error we have, the better result uh, we have. So this is kind of intuitive. First of all, we have our initial alignment. We're just going to evaluate it before we're going to do ICP. So here is just, 
we get initial alignment we just print that out we can see here that we get a fitness score of this and we also get this um rms uh, error as we can see here the correspondent set size is um is this one here close to 3500 and then now we can actually just do icp see how could does icp actually like perform uh, when we compare to to these metrics here so these are just the standard ones these will be the metrics for this point cloud that i just showed you up here we can see that this is not a good alignment alignment of the target and the source point cloud so now we're going to do point to point icp we won't really go into details with the algorithm itself in later videos we might go into details on how these algorithms actually like works under the hood and how they implement it we can like read the re uh, research papers here um, and so on but now in this video here we're just going to go through the examples see how it works and then compare the two um the two icp versions so point to point point to plane and then compare it to the actual like or our initial alignment so now we're just going to apply our point to point icp again everything is just inside of this OO, um, open 3d library we go into pipelines registration and then we just use registration icp we pass in the sort the target we need to set up some threshold value here as well we have our um, initial transformation and then we also need to set up this transformation estimation point to point so this will be the actual algorithm that we want to use when we will change uh, we will change this later on when we're going to use point to plane so this is just specifying what algorithm to actually like want to uh, to use when we are doing our iterative uh, close point algorithm then we're just going to print it out and then we can also see the transformation which we, we will just get from our uh, registration point to point here or like point to point here dot transformation this will be our actual transformation that we can then pass to this function draw registration results we have our target uh, source and our target point clouds and then we're just going to apply this transformation to our actual like point clouds and then align them or like combine our point clouds and then we can see the results uh, before we will go down here and do the actual like uh, evaluation so here we're just going to run the, uh, the plot of code we can see that now um the results look kind of the same uh here but again it, it's really hard to say just visually we can see like some of the background has been aligned uh, better we can see that there's more changes in blue uh blue and um blue and yellow here but we can still see the chair here it is not perfectly aligned yet we can also see here at the bottom there's still like a translation between these two point clouds but down here we can, again we just get out these different kind of like metrics with our fitness and our inlier uh, rms uh, e and then we also get the transformation matrix out here where we have our rotation rotation matrix here and then we also have our translation vector so this is just the transformation that we're applying on our point clouds so here we can see that the fitness score here increases from uh, from from this one here so again the higher the number the better and we can also see that our error or like a root, root mean square error actually like is reduced so we get a lower error so the alignment is actually like better now when we're using this uh, icp here just compared to uh, to our initial transformation so here we can see that registration icp just runs until convergence or reaches a maximum number of iterations and 30 is by default and that is the case in this example we just hit 30 as the default value so it didn't really align the cl uh, point clouds to uh, that much because we only ran the, the iterations here for 30 again we're using the iterative close point method it can be changed to allow more computation time um, and also to improve the results further and that is what we're going to do down in this block of code the only thing we're changing here is actually like the max iterations uh, down here so again we just have this T icp convergence criteria that we need to specify as well together with our point-to-point -point algorithm up here for icp and then we just specify max iteration set that equal to 2000s and then we will now run 2000s iterations instead of 30 iterations as we just did so we're going to run this block of code here and it will run the algorithm for 20 uh, like 2000s iterations so after a couple of seconds here we actually get up our results we see that this is now a really really good alignment of our two point clouds we can now see the chair here is perfectly aligned we don't have the trend like the translation here at the bottom we can see like the, the background the wall here is also really perfectly aligned but the best results that we can see is actually like here at the chair where we can just see just it just switches between like blue and and, and red uh, points here because these are actually like just the same points as in the point cloud we don't have this rotation or like translation in the chair anymore so this is actually like a really really nice um 
really really nice alignment of these two point clouds where we can actually like use this to reconstruct uh, environments whole environments as well if we just have correspondences in our uh, in our point clouds when we're capturing it so this is good results again we can go down and see the fitness score again it has increased by a lot we can also see the error here has decreased by a lot so again this is just really good so now we can go down here to a point to plane icp so this is just another variation and another algorithm that it implemented for uh, icp so instead of just doing point to point iterative close point where it's like going to take a point um to the x like nearest or like the closest uh plane again another video where we're going to go into more details about these algorithms how they work and how they implement it now we're just going to run this block of code and then instead of uh, instead of passing in this transformation estimation point to point we now we just specify point to plane and it will then use the other algorithm here instead of point to point algorithm all the other all, all the other lines of code here is actually like just the same as in the previous blocks of code we see now applying point to plane uh, plane isp and here it took like one two seconds to actually like do this algorithm we don't need to specify some maximum number of iterations it just does it the results are really good because we're using this point to plane again there's no like translation here at the bottom the floor here is perfectly aligned the chair is per perfectly aligned as we can see if we just zoom in here so all the points in the point cloud are really nice aligned we have a really low error and also a high fitness score and again we can just see here at the background all the points in the point clouds for both the target and the source uh, point cloud is really nicely um, aligned again we can see the fitness score really high fitness score and also a really low error down here at the bottom we can see here that the point to plane isp reaches tight alignment with 30 iterations so now instead of doing 2000 iterations we've only done 30 iterations and we got this same results here by using point to plane icp with 30 iterations we got the same results um as in the icp with point to point where we did 2000 uh, 2000 2000 iterations and it took like a couple more seconds to actually like do the processing if we only did point to point icp with 30 iterations we know that the results weren't that good and we can still see that the, the two point clouds were not perfectly aligned in the point cloud when we displayed it so here we can see that the point to plane uh, icp algorithm uses uh, point normals so we're talking about like uh, normals how we can estimate normals and that and, and so on in the previous tutorials from this tutorial here we load normals from files if norms are not giving they can be computed, uh, computed with vertex normal estimation as i just said uh, that we've been through in and uh, previous videos so make sure to check those out if you want to know like more about how we can do operations what different kind of operations can we do on point clouds and how can we actually like post process our point clouds remove outliers in our point clouds because right now we're going to into more details how we can actually like use post process point clouds when we have good point clouds how can we do that to actually like do some applications that can be reached, used in real life and in different kind of projects and so on so thank you guys for watching this video here and remember the subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future it just really helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way i'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about like uh, different kind of image operations camera calibration stereo vision how we can use stereo vision um, and so on to create uh, depth maps how we can create depth maps or like use depth maps to create point clouds and now we're inside this point cloud tutorial where we're using all of these things that we have combined so if you want to check that tutorial out i'll link to it up here or else i'll see you next video guys bye for now